Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Denfair Speaker Series. Um, I'm Sandra. I'm the editor of Denfair. Uh, and here with me today, I have our judges, uh, our awards judges, um, that we ran the other night on Thursday. Uh, Susie Anetta, the editor of Design Anthology, uh, and Rob Mills, um, architect. Um, what we're about to do today is give you a sense of uh, the things to not miss on the show floor. There's a lot to see out there. So there's 12,000 square meters, uh, 140 stands, 300 plus brands. There's a lot to see. Um, I realize that not everyone has all day to go through it. Uh, and even I haven't seen it all. Um, so hopefully from running through the awards, you guys will know um, where to head. Um, and get a good sense of the show. So to start, I will ask uh, Susie, maybe we'll start with you, um, to uh, tell us a little bit about yourself um, and what you do um, and how you sort of came to be a judge. Okay, hi everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm Susie from Design Anthology magazine. We're uh, based in Hong Kong. I'm actually from Melbourne originally, but I've been living overseas for probably the last 17 years or the best part of the last 17 years. Um, so it's, uh, it's fantastic to be back in Melbourne. Um, I do feel like a little bit of an outsider in some respects um, here judging, but it's, um, it's been really great to be part of this and to kind of, um, I guess, be looking at how the design scene in Australia is maturing. Um, so yeah, I guess, you know, for us to be media partners with Denfair has been an amazing opportunity and um, yeah, I, I don't know mm. what else I should say. Uh, well, I think what's um, interesting to me is that you come in from both a local but also um, an outside perspective. So when Susie comes here and looks at all of um, what's on the show floor, she's really coming in with uh, a unique or a bit of a fresh um, gaze on things and I think that yeah that brings something different to the table um, whereas I guess Rob um, brings something local um, if you could speak to your experience and, and how you came to be a judge here thanks Susie I'm an architect and interior designer um, I've been at it a couple of years and uh, uh, I was struck by Den Fair yes, um, Thursday. Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. It surprised me. There was more, um, uh, I gained a lot more knowledge than I thought I would. Um, I'm always searching for raw materials to craft design with, and that's how I create unique things. It, well, it's definitely my aim to create unique things, so therefore I start with raw materials. And um, that's probably why I chose the um, the winner for the large exhibition space. Save that. I will. <laughs> we'll get to that. I will. Um, and then um, there, I saw a lot of committed individuals introducing their product to the world. And then the third thing that struck me was that the organisers of Denfair were really committed to the awards. They took it very seriously. They listened to our views. They carefully guided us towards some exhibitions which they thought had gone the extra to um, express their wares and and I saw a level of care and appreciation in them that made me think this is a good thing Denfair and <laughs> it's, it's run by two guys that are really committed and probably exhausted by the process so th that, that was my take home from the event the other day I, I was actually in the end honoured to be um, asked and honoured to participate and um, and I want to give them a present to say thank you because oh. I went home and knew that I'd really benefited from the experience. Yeah, well you're not allowed to tell the organisers if you see them, I think we'll just keep that to ourselves, yeah. a bit of a surprise for them. Yeah. Um, so uh, I wanted to touch on something that uh, both of you shared the experience of um, separately. Uh, you uh, both attended the uh, Milan um, Salone this year. Um, can you share a little bit about that experience and, and, um, and what you were doing there? <laughs> Sorry, okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm very lucky that I get a chance to go to Milan um, almost every year. Uh, this year I had our art director from my team with me, which was really amazing. Um, 
Aside from Milan, I, most of the travel that I do as an editor and in my role is design fairs throughout Asia, um, more so than Europe. It's where I spend most of my time. Um, but yeah, Milan is obviously the event on the design calendar internationally. Um, it's, I think, for anyone within the industry, kind of the must see. Mm. There's a lot of design fairs now internationally. It's, um, you know, there's a lot of competition for, I guess, our time as editors, but also for designers to go and see things. But I feel like the consensus um, from people that I know internationally is that Milan is still the fair. Mm. Um, and I, you know, Milan kind of gets bigger and crazier every year. It's, um, it takes a lot of strategy to kind of figure out how to spend that week. Um, it's utterly impossible to see everything. Um, but one of my things from Milan this year was actually the Australian presence. Mm. Um, it was the biggest, I think, in history. Wow. Um, yeah, and actually a number of the designers that are here at, in Denfair this year actually were also a part mm. of that exhibition. Um, and obviously Rob was there as well. There was a number of different locations, but there was kind of one core space mm. exhibiting Australian and New Zealand designers. Um, and so that was really exciting. It was really proud, um, a proud moment for me being Australian to kind of see us there on a glo global stage, um, but also to be hearing from people overseas and, and their sort of thoughts and opinions on, you know, Australian design and where it sort of fits and sits, I suppose, on a global stage and the quality um, and I think by and large the feedback was really positive so yeah it's yeah, really exciting yeah. yeah I've yet to make it um, but it sounds amazing and I, I think it's really heartening to hear that a lot of what you see on the show floor you know has um, had international acclaim um, I think you know to be a part of something like that or to be able to attend a fair like this even for myself um, I'm learning and seeing new things all the time so it's good to know that what we see here actually does reflect some that has been on a global scale. Um, and for yourself, Rob? We launched our new film in Milan at a restaurant con, con, uh, Contrast, which is one of the boutique um, restaurants um, presenting food in a, in a completely different way. And we chose Milan because, and the Salon de Mobile, because that is the centre of design in the world. It, there's a reason for it. The agriculture around Milan generated great wealth for the Milanese and they were able to um, invest in design and industrialization at a time when that was evolving and became the design leaders of the world. I think they, they, the reason they're so good at design is it's, in, it's within them, mm. but they got, had the resources from the land around them and we chose to launch our film there because our film is all about land and, what, and the opportunity land gives an architect and designer to um, create architecture mm. on. And um, I've been going to Milan for many years. It's mm -hmm. been the source of a lot of the materials we use yeah. and we discover new ideas there and relationships. And um, so I highly recommend it to you. It's, it's a wonderful experience. But it's, um, it's challenging physically <laughs> and mentally. Um, uh, so I've been here for three days, Rob. <laughs> 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 oh, it's been a pleasure. Um, okay, so I think what we'll do is um, start with the Den Fair Awards and do a bit of a recap on that. So um, Thursday and Friday at Den Fair are the industry days. Um, so we're aware that not everyone has the opportunity to attend that. Um, so, yeah, we wanted to open it up to everyone. Um, so, firstly, we have uh, Yaron Dixon. So, tell me about the judging behind this and, and how you arrived at, at this project. Oh, this is a piece by one of the young designers. There, there's a central stand midway through opposite the front door, I think, that displays the work of young designers. And so, it's very important and I, I thought it was appropriate that the organisers chose that spot to to elevate those designers to a, to a quite a high position within the fair. Um, we gave this a high accommodation for its simplicity um, and um, uh, our, our favourite was, was the winner of course um, but this was a really resolved piece. 
Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think when I was wandering around, um, I th yeah, it's front and centre. Um, I was looking for things that were perhaps a little bit different, um, something that I hadn't seen before. Um, obviously good quality workmanship, but yeah, sort of beautiful and understated in its simplicity. And I think this piece speaks to that. It's, it is a very simple design, but not really something that I had seen before. So I think we were fairly unanimous in giving it the high commendation. Mm, absolutely. And always a good idea to have a neat place to store wine, hey? Absolutely. And Chris Connell was the third judge. And Chris, yes, is, I don't know if right. you know his work, but it's really pure. And this was easily the most pure of all of the exhibits. So on to the winner. So um, the winner is Makiko Ryujin. Um, and I'll just say a little bit about Front Centre too. Front Centre is the platform that Denver established uh, in support of emerging designers. And it, we do it every year um, to basically elevate their work and to connect them with industry. So I think that's the main thing that uh, the main role that Denfair fulfills is to try and advance um, the design industry and, and support um, emerging design where we can, and that's what Front Centre is. Um, so if you could speak to um, Makiko's work. What about it caught your eye? Um, I think for me it was, again, that it was just something quite different. It really stood out from everything else that was there. Um, I've spent a bit of time in Japan, so I guess the burning of the wood, this particular technique, was something that was familiar to me. Um, it's actually a way of preserving the timber. Um, but I, I really liked how kind of modern and simple, but also a little bit um, tribal and primitive mm. they felt. Um, mm. Just beautiful objects that I think would sit in a number of different kind of environments. Mm. Um, it's quite a singular statement, isn't it? It's very, mm. um, the silhouette's quite strong. Um, I didn't realise that it was burnt. I thought it was painted. No, it's actually a burning technique. I mean, I can't wow. speak for the designer, but I think there is a little yeah. blurb. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. So next up, we have best small stand. The highly commended was Ashley & Co. Now, this is a bit of a left field choice, I thought, because it's not a necessarily a design product. Yeah. Can you speak to that idea? Just the presentation's mm. um, strong. Yeah, and that's so important. You can you can have a, a great product, but if you don't present it to the world succinctly and with with confidence, then um, no one will recognise you, mm. and you won't get the sales, and and the rest is history. So, I think that's why we supported this one. Would you think? Mm. Yeah, mm, absolutely. A good strong choice of colour there as well. Um, and the winner for best small stand, Coco Flip, and I think this was quite a powerful ones on everyone's Instagrams, you'll see it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think when I was wandering around, um, particularly with the smaller stands, I was kind of interested to see what people had done with a small space. I mean, in some ways it's more challenging. It could be easier, but it, it can be more challenging. Um, I think it was also really interesting to see what people had done. Um, they weren't necessarily smaller budgets, but I felt like perhaps they were a little bit imaginative. Yeah, and yeah. I think what I really liked about this was that it felt very architectural. It had a very sort of strong presence to it. Um, you know, the arches, obviously, but also the colour. And the product just looked really great within the space. So it was kind of an easy choice, I think. Mm. And for you? Um, two, two, two points I'd like to make regarding this. I didn't know this existed. I'd travelled the whole fair, <laughs> hadn't seen it. And I asked a friend of mine, what's great? What have, what have I possibly missed? And they mentioned this. And then it was quite difficult to find even, you know, even after that. And when I saw it for the first time, um, what I saw was someone who really believed in what they designed. And you could see the craftsmanship was exceptional. And they'd, they'd really backed themselves and spent the money to present themselves to the world. And I'm a big fan of presentation. So for me... This was a standout mm. for the small stand yeah. award. And I think social media agrees. <laughs> um, okay, best medium stand. Um, the highly commended, we have Robert Gordon Pottery. Um, yeah, okay, for, for this one, um, I was really interested as I was walking around how differently people had treated the space. Um, that they had kind of delineated this area that was quite temporary without necessarily laying down flooring or kind of taping off a square. 
And I think these guys did this in a really interesting way. Um, I thought it was beautifully presented, the colours, the product is really beautiful, but I also really liked the fact that they had some of the raw material there as well. So it sort of gave you a bit of a, an insight into how it was made and that sense of craft. So that was kind of what I appreciated about it. I, I, I think it's a great story. It, it's quite nostalgic, mm. the colours the, that they chose for the product and then the backdrop. Um, remind me of a hardware store, you know, an old yeah. fashioned hardware store. Yeah. Um, and for that, it did stand out, and I'm really interested to use their product as a result. So well, I think it, I think it's worked yeah. for them. Well, certainly got their ROI back on that stand then. If you're going to work with them, <laughs> um, and the winner for the best medium stand, and this actually was the first thing that caught my eye when I walked. In. I saw them setting it up, so. Um, they, the ladies here, um, were sort of weaving these flowers into this um, giant piece of fabric and then watching them sort of raise it up. It was just a magic moment to just to watch it all come together. Um, I'm sure that, I don't know whether that was your same experience of... Um, looking at it yeah absolutely again i think it was as i said before about how people had kind of created a sense of space with yeah. something that wasn't necessarily solid or architectural um i really liked that it had a little bit of a mysterious element to it that mm. you could kind of see through but you didn't really know what it was mm. um there was something very light and ethereal and a little bit romantic about it all. And mm. I thought that that also really just suited the product that they had on mm. display. Like the whole thing just worked really well. Mm. So that was, yeah, it was very appealing. And it's communicating an abstract notion, which I thought was quite complex. It's fragrance. So they, they do uh, candles, don't they? Yeah. Um, and for you, Rob? Yeah. For me, this is the opposite to Robert Gordon. Robert stood himself in the whole space and survived these people chose to cocoon themselves like a bedouin tent mm. so too does halcyon lake the carpet people and um that was another um i thought important important stand for me and, and here you see the curtains used in the same way mm. and um creates an intimacy that you could only achieve if you if you separate yourself Mm. from the rest of the fair, whereas Robert Gordon didn't need to do that. He's, he was, he's, he's quite strong design, so mm. I'm Absolutely. just contrasting, that's all I'm doing. Mm. Okay, next one. Best large stand. The highly commended is the wood room, which I actually thought would take the, the winner's spot. Um, so can you speak to that decision? Yeah, I think, again, it was really just about the simplicity. Um, you know, walking past it a couple of times, your sort of eye is drawn to what is that, what's in there, um, that they had kind of created, you know, an architectural space, but I really like the treatment of the, I guess, the faux ceiling. Mm. It was quite soft, the way that it filtered the light through. Um, and again, I think it really just suited the product that they had on the stand, so, yeah. I noticed these guys on Instagram about two months ago and they're from Northern Beaches in Sydney, quite close to where we live from time to time and um, they're strong, they're really strong in the way they present themselves to the world and so when I saw their stand today, it kind of made sense. They'd gone mm -hmm. to the trouble of employing one of Australia's great designers in Jonathan Richards, whose work I, I love, I don't, I don't know about you, and the ceiling is testament to that, it's, mm. it's quite beautiful. Um, they're ambitious, these guys. Mm. Um, I, we, I really liked it, but I just felt the reason it didn't win was that the other was stronger. Was stronger, even. Yeah. Um, I just love the quality of the light in the space. And when you talk about um, making, creating space out of abstract things, soft things, um, it's amazing what light can do. You just step in there, it's a totally different feeling, a totally different environment. Yeah. I think from a business point of view, they'll be one of the success stories of the show mm. as opposed to the winner okay. because okay. they present themselves in a more recognisable mm. way. All right, so then let's see this winner. And they, and they back it up with Instagram and things like that. Okay, so American Hardwood Export Council. Now, this is actually a beautifully resolved stand um, and there will be a talk just after this that I'm moderating on it if you're um, curious to hear more about it. 
um, all about um, the different usage of timber within it. So, um, but I, I think too, uh, the interesting choice given the wood room. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think for me it was sort of a space that I wanted to just keep walking around. Mm. Um, and as you do that, you notice all of these little details. It's deceptively simple. It kind of, on first glance, doesn't look like a lot until you actually really start mm. looking at it and studying it, which obviously I was, trying to figure out who it was and where they were from and what they were selling. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of really interesting little details. Um, and I liked, again, the way that they had created a sense of space that was sort of filtering, I guess, the outside and creating a little space within. Mm. Um, it's just, yeah, it's beautifully done. It's designed by a guy called Adam Markowitz, who's mm -hmm. a, a Melbourne architect and um, furniture maker. And, um, and his father actually, as it turned out, <laughs> is my lawyer. And I didn't make the connection until after the award, I promise you that. Uh, but the reason I chose this um, um, as one of the three judges was the execution. It's beautifully executed, it's pure. It, it has the hallmarks of the Barcelona Pavilion where you have a lineal design, mm. um, not, not actually framing and capturing the space like the workroom um, display does. It, it allows you to come and go in and around it, which I think maybe is why you walk around it. And I found myself doing the same. Mm. The detailing is exceptional. It really reminds us all of how wonderful wood is and as a, as a, as a material to mm. use. And finally, you know, it, it, this is what I search for, raw materials that then allow design to exist mm. without too much adornment. And here mm. it is, and it's fantastic. It's mm. really fantastic. So we're gonna commission Adam to work with us in our S Sydney office to to help us create our new Sydney office. And wow. we're gonna source the timber from the American Hardwood company. So it's, it, it's really worked for us. And yeah. I feel actually relieved that I've, I've met them both. And, um, and so the Den Fair's been good for us, <laughs> it really has. We're not paying him to say that, by the way. I just wanna make that clear. Um, I, for me, having only just briefly um, walked around it and I will do a proper look before the talk that I'm about to give. Um, what I noticed instantly was that you sort of, you're right, you're invited to almost circulate because the, the way that those wooden fins are sort of positioned, you get different views into the space. Um, and you know, the way that the joinery is done, you, you almost have to get up right close and see how seamless it is. Um, so yeah, beautiful, beautiful work. Okay, next up. Best workspace product. So um, Denfair this year, it's the first time ever that Denfair's launched their workspace precinct. And if you haven't been yet, it's just over here. Um, at the center of it, there's a big installation um, by Future Space designers. Um, they are communicating um, what is unique to the Australian workspace. Um, so it's been a big um, decision, I think, to, to launch a new workspace um, precinct for Denfair. Even though a lot of their exhibitors previously had sort of, you could specify in, in both categories, in, in workspace um, or in um, residential. Um, so that's um, a bit of context around, around the new precinct. Um, so the, new, the best workspace product, highly commended, is the linear acoustic pendant, which is very cool. It's beautiful. Can you tell me a little bit about that decision? Um, yeah, I think generally with these kinds of things, a lot of the entrants are furniture. <laughs> That's what I noticed, at least anyway. I don't know about you. Um, so it was kind of refreshing to see something that was different and mm. outside of that sort of typical category. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm based in Hong Kong and the acoustics in most workspaces and restaurants is appalling. Mm. Um, so this is actually a light fixture, if I'm not wrong, but it also has yes. acoustic properties. Yep. Um, which I just thought was really quite interesting and something a little bit different. So mm. it was kind of an easy choice, I think. Mm. And interesting colourways too with the, the pink. It's quite bright. Yeah, I, I think I appreciated the acoustics. The, the combination of, you know, a, a light that is also bringing other qualities to the, um, to the space. Mm. So yeah. 
Might be able to use some more of those acoustics. I can sort of hear the beats pumping outside of this um, this space. <laughs> um, okay, so the winner of the best workspace product. Um, now this is a beautiful table. Um, so the chameleon by now and actually by Adam Goodrum um, has interchangeable legs. Is that right? We talk to that. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, well, Adam Goodrum, when we were talking about the Australian designers mm. that were in Milan, was one of those. Um, big fan of what he does. Uh, and I think this is just a really great example of that, mm. that it's, again, kind of deceptively simple cat, um, but very clever. Mm. Um, and I think it, it's also just very forward-looking in terms of how offices and workspaces are, I think, moving, you know, in that direction where um, flexibility is key, I think. Mm, mm. And for yourself, Rob? Um, Chris Connell was, as I said before, one of the judges, and he took us to this and kind of demanded that we vote for it. Uh, <laughs> and we understood why, because he is more, maybe more qualified than either of us, because he's a furniture designer and maker, and what he saw in this design was flexibil flexibility and in the manufacture he saw an, a, a product that is, can be manu manufactured economically and, and the, but the, most importantly the final result was that it was um, beautiful to look at. Mm. So um, it was a standout, mm. I think. And if you do head over to the Workspace Precinct, um, that the stand where that exists is actually the table. It's just giant. So the, the legs are certainly interchangeable because they've interchanged them with legs as tall as you can walk underneath it. Um, so I would encourage you to go and visit that one. Uh, and next up is the best international product. Um, and quite a few um, entrants, I would say, um, for this one this year. Um, they do try the, the boys to... Um, get in quite a few um, global um, exhibitors, so um, a lot to choose from there. The highly commended was, is it, whose is that? It doesn't have it on there. What's their name? The highly commended was this beautiful product, <laughs> <laughs> which we are unfortunately... So good, the name we can't remember. Which is un unnameable. Um, but if you could speak to the, the product itself and why? I think, again, just deceptively simple, something that um, is just a really beautiful solution for, um, you know, something that's kind of an everyday thing, moving around mm. seats for meetings, casual kind of conversations, um, and for it to be so light but kind of quite attractive mm. to look at as well, I think is... Again, is it felt? It looks I believe felt. so. Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. Mm. Yeah, and it's beautiful shape, great texture, fantastic colour. It is light. It's comfortable. Mm. I mean, it's a great, great thing, really. Mm -mm -mm. All right, next up, and the winner, who we actually have, uh, Woody from Zaha Hadid Design here. Um, tell me about this choice. I think it's a beautiful product. I think we can all agree. Um, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, I think we were all fairly unanimous in this, that um, it's just a very elegant piece. Um, it's quite clever. I really like the idea that it's, um, it's modular. You can buy individual pieces of this system, I suppose, for want of a better word, and kind of continue to add to that and grow the collection over time. Um, it also means if you just want one small piece, you can do that and do that quite affordably, but it, it can kind of grow. Um, I love the fact that it's two different metal finishes. Um, it sort of almost feels to me a little bit like a, I guess, a Jetsons-like future city, mm. which I guess says a lot about the architecture of Zaha Hadid. Um, but yeah, it's just a very elegant product. Um, and I think, yeah, we all were fairly unanimous. Mm. Can we interview? <laughs> Can we interview? Does Woody want to say a few words? <laughs> no, nah, he's fine. He's fine. He's had his panel. <laughs> I'd, um, I'd, I'd be interested to hear about Zaha did design because that's the company. Woody, could you share? Could you just enlighten us a little bit about Zaha did design? Rob's going off road. Okay, you're putting me in the spot. 
Hi, Woody. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, Zadi Design is, is we, we, we start with Zadi Architect, right? Um, we, it's, it's a sister company, and we, 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 we have, we have tr like 12 of us, but the company is 400, so we, we, we work with the architect. We are architect to start off with. So I've been with the company for 25 years, so I, I started with the architecture, Zaha opened the, the Zadi Design seven years ago, and, and, and I'm in charge of the Zadi Design. Zadi Design, including exhibition, actually looking after her archiving, her original mm. artwork, um, interior. It's, it's, it's just part of the Zadi family, mm. <laughs> as I can say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I call it mini architecture because it's so far, so quick. Um, it's one to one. You can't lie about it. It needs to be functional. You need to be fast. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Um, everyone has to go and visit um, <laughs> the product on the stands because I think that's the best way to experience it. Really. Thanks, Winnie. Um, okay. On with oh, that's an extra one, is it? Okay. That's for audience questions for you guys later. <laughs> Um, next up, best Australian product. So I think one thing that's important to note is Denfair absolutely 100% stands by um, genuine Australian product and I think that really forms the backbone of, um, of the offering really here. Um, it's important to us to have local support um, from designers but also for us to give back to those designers too um, equally. Um, so um, that sort of frames the uh, best Australian product. And we do have a really great community of people that, um, you know, I mean, you sort of don't want it to be the same faces all the time, but at the same time, it's great to to come here every year and have the support of people and see what people are doing and, and what, what, what's new. Um, so the highly commended is Robert Gordon. Um, so not only the stand, but also the product. Um, can we speak a little bit to this? I'm I'm just a big fan of the. Um, it's made of terracotta, I think, with mm. a glaze over the top, which means it's light. Um, actually, traditionally, I think most sanitary ware is made of terracotta. Hmm. Mm. But but <laughs> none with this sort of finish on it and and shape and organic feel, which which I I really appreciate. So that's why mm. I was a big fan of this. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I think it's partly the shape, um, the finish, that it's not quite so perfect and kind of even uh, across the surface. Mm. There's something about it that just feels very sort of natural, casual, which just says Australia to me. Um, I think it's also just very usable. It's a very kind of commercial project uh, product and I, I don't mean that in a bad way. I think... I can imagine it selling very well and being very desirable. Mm, absolutely. And the winner, I feel like we need a drum roll. On this. Um, the winner is Made by Pen, uh, the Sway Lamp. So that's actually a piece by Nick Rennie, the designer. Um, I love this. And I, I almost wish he had a video of this because it actually, it's weighted so that you can push it and so that kids can play with it and it never fall, not that I've seen, never falls down. Um, so let's yeah, have a little chat about that. Yeah, I think again it was just the sort of the simplicity of the design, that it's really beautiful, it's fun, there's, um, it's quite light-hearted I suppose, it's not a serious product. Um, but again, I think it's just, it's not another chair, so... Mm. <laughs> It's nice to see something a little bit different and outside of that category. Mm. We saw something similar at the B&B uh, stand in Milan in the landscape. And um, they were using pendant lights within the landscape as opposed to lights at ground level or placed on a wall. They were self-supporting um, self and, and independent of the surfaces around them. and and um, and yet the light was soft, so this item had all of those sort of qualities to it and and is really flexible, so, mm. and, and great shape, so. Mm. 
Um, I happen to personally know um, the Made by Pen. They're a family business um, based in Melbourne. And I, I know for a fact that everything that they have um, sort of put together, all of their products uh, are a result of a problem that they've had at home. Um, they've got two young boys that sort of tear around the house um, and, you know, things need to be indestructible, absolutely functional, um, multifunctional in some cases. Uh, so, yeah, I think a really deserving brand um, and I'm, I was happy to see them win. Um, that brings us to the end. All right, thanks, guys, and thank you to... Susie and Rob. <laughs>